Hello and welcome to episode 35 of Rebrand Everything. Today we're going to be creating five new logo options for Mountain Dew. Thanks to whoever submitted this over on rebrandeverything.com. It was submitted before I added the name field to the form and the email address that they left didn't actually work when I tried to get in contact. So thanks to whoever it was. Let's get on with making these five logos. So as always, I started out by having a look at their current logo, having a look at the logo history and learning a little bit more about the background of the company. Their logo history has gone from this super old fashioned like illustration style and gradually got simpler and simpler until their latest logo, which looks like this. This latest logo seems to have like capitalized on the fact that they've built up such a strong brand over the previous years. So dropping some letters out of the actual company name is a bold move, but I think it does help make it look more snappy and edgy. So with a quick look at the logo on the packaging on the shelf, you just think, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. It's kind of been around, feels like it's been around forever. You just recognize it and know what it is, which is a good thing. But now that I've been looking at the logo in depth and looking at it up close, I've noticed a few things that could definitely do with some improvement. So the font that they're using is called Serpentine and it kind of looks a little bit dated now a little bit sort of 80s style um, and it kind of looks horrible even when it's not skewed but then they've skewed the font like dramatically skewing a font for me is generally a no-no and if I am going to do it it will just be a little bit this is really dramatic I know that kind of sharp style they're going for but it's still very like an intense skew on the font so skewing a font that's already a little bit ugly seems to me like a recipe for disaster this logo also includes another one of my pet design hates which is mixing lowercase and capital letters but they adjust the size of them to be the same height so that you see this lowercase e here in the word Jew is the same height as the capital D um, and I just find that that just makes some really weird shapes and kind of makes the text hard to read it's just it's just a strange decision I'm also not a great fan of the double stroke around the whole logo however I know that the reason they use this is so that it stands out on that green background that they use on their packaging so even though I've just moaned about almost all aspects of this logo, I have to say that it does have a very distinctive look and it is a very strong brand. The green and red colouring, which I would normally associate with kind of like Christmas look, uh, seems to work and I think that's because they've added that secondary lime green in there as well and it adds a little bit of energy into the design uh, to just kind of fit the actual product. So anyway, enough of what I think about the logo. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will get on with sketching some ideas out. So at the idea stage, I started out by thinking of ways to clean up the logo, clean up the silhouette and make everything a little bit neater and tidier whilst retaining some of them sharp angles. I had some ideas where I sliced the logo instead of skewed it, which could give it that sharp effect whilst keeping the silhouette kind of clean, neat and tidy. And another idea I had was to create a sort of badge where I left align the two words and then put a box around each word in a way that meant the jaggedness of the line endings created a shape that kind of indicates mountains obviously because the word mountain appears in the name I thought that might be a nice little touch and also the fact that the letter M kind of looks like a mountain already made that kind of like the low hanging fruit idea uh, that made it into a few of the sketches as well. I was looking at other ways of incorporating mountains but without being too obvious and then I thought of an idea that was quite cool and that was the word mountain was in a triangle and the word dew was below but inside a shape that made the silhouette look like a droplet. I thought that would be quite cool as the top tri triangle kind of actually looks like a mountain and then the addition of the bottom like kind of makes it look like a drop for dew. I thought that was like a visual translation of the words that might work. So once I'd sketched everything out it was time to move over into Illustrator to turn some of these ideas into something actually that looks good. If you are enjoying this video so far please remember to press like it really helps the channel out. Thanks. One. So for option one this week, I wanted to essentially develop their current branding um, that they've already got there into something that's cleaner and more refined. I aligned the italic text by drawing a line along the edge of the text but extending it further to make sure that both the left edges were touching that guideline um, as otherwise you kind of get that stepped effect where you've got two italic texts if they start on the exact same point they kind of you get a step whereas I wanted that to be one clean swoop. Once I had this text laid out I outlined it and then went to edit path and then offset path and that is a quick way to ensure that the outline is the same distance away from each edge and then what I'd built here was definitely cleaner and clearer than the old logo but I felt like the font was just still even though it was a lot less skewed it still just wasn't working for me um, I know a lot of my comments always mention how my font choices are too corporate or too clean or too boring but I couldn't help myself but try something a little bit cleaner my reasoning for that is that because I'm applying text to the effects, I'm rotating it a little bit, putting a stroke around the outside, I wanted to start with something as clean as possible so it doesn't just become this big muddle of effects mixed with this big quirky font as well. 
um, so by having a clean starting point it makes it easier to apply the effects without it looking like it's my first day in Photoshop and I'm just applying everything to it. Two. So for option two I wanted to look closely into the slicing of the logo instead of the skewing and rotating. Um, I thought I could incorporate some of them hard angles and give it that edgy look uh, while keeping the text upright and clear to read. As you can see I was messing around with a few ways of doing this but I ended up murdering the options when it came to the final fiddling stage. Um, I was trying to get parts of it to align and the only way I could do that was by stretching and manipulating the text but not because I wanted to do it but because I had to which to kind of make things align. Um, and I was ended up like I was kind of happy with it, but then at the end, after I'd fiddled it around too much, it kind of felt like something that looked a little bit amateurish and just generally bad. So I decided to go back to the drawing board, simplify the idea back, which always normally helps when I just simplify the idea right back to a base level, and decided to put a slice transition between the two words, but just on one of the stems of the letters. And then this way I was focusing on clean typography, and then I added the outline box onto this. I edited it and just took lots of them points out, so it wasn't, just so it wasn't following the curves of the text so much as I wanted it more straight and kind of iconic. The hard part of that was making it look good around these curved letters but the way that I thought worked was adjusting the spacing slightly to account for the overshoot of the curved letters and that seemed to work quite well. Three. So I had an idea at sketching which I mentioned earlier that I thought was interesting. It was a half mountain half droplet logo. I made a droplet shape using a rectangle, snap to grid and the live rounded corner tool and then basically made small adjustments to this until I had something that looked okay. As I was doing this I had this worried feeling that the colours made it look a little bit like an oil company or a little bit kind of like mechanical and I wasn't quite sure why that was but then after a little bit of research I realised why it reminds me of oil and it's because it uses the same colours as the Castrol branding. Um, however, when I was thinking about this a little bit more, I think the lime green stroke around the edge of the logo and the fact that it's not going to be sitting on an oil bottle, it's going to be clearly on a soft drinks bottle, it's going to be obvious that it's not engine oil, it's going to be obvious that it is a drink. Four. So for option four, I wanted to take the logo ideas back to something simple that was adaptable uh, with readability high on like the priority list. I'd had this idea at the sketching stage about making like a responsive style logo. So each word was in its own box, which means that you can kind of stack them however we like. And the idea would be that you use the landscape version for places where it looks better, such as the website header, or if you have it running upwards up a can or something like that. Um, and then you can use a stack version on like the bottle or somewhere like on the top of a multi-pack. Just you can, you can swap them and it's interchangeable depending on what works best in situ. And the key thing with this is that the elements are actually the same whether we use the landscape or the stacked version. So it would hopefully be a strong enough concept not to cause confusion to the customer. The font that I'm using here is called Veneer and it's the soft variant, so Veneer Soft. And it just has these slightly rounded ends which I thought is quite a nice touch. Five. So for option five, I did just want to go for that low hanging fruit icon and make a mountain M icon. So as you probably know by now, I always like to make my logo so that they work in a single color. So I used a white stroke on this mountain that looks like it's in front. Um, and I, that was good as well because it saved the red and the green touching because them two colors, when they're touching, they kind of clash and it makes it look like it's moving in the middle, which is just a horrible effect that I never want to see. Um, and it also reminds me of that test in the opticians where they say which one's clearer and it's like green on one side, red on the other, but it's like just horrible and blurry in the middle. Anyway, as I developed the icon, I thought all of the options were looking quite sharp, so I thought maybe I'd take this in a softer direction, and I started just by rounded the stroke ends, and then I thought actually I'm going to go into the mountains and use the live corners just to soften them a little bit as well. And I thought that gave it quite a different direction, I mean it's quite far away from what they've got now, and it looks a lot softer, but I did think it could work. I realised that the text was going to have trouble standing out if I used it underneath the icon, and that was just because the backgrounds that they use on the packaging is quite like heavy with triangle patterns and stuff like that. So I didn't really want to leave the text just out fighting for itself. So then I decided to put the text within the icon in like this panel so that that has created a unit that can then sit anywhere on any background. So then by doing all of this it created a clean logo that was kind of like jam packed with like symbolizations. It's like positive upward facing arrows which is always a good thing most people will never notice but I just like to know that it's all kind of positive and uplifting. Um, it looks like mountains of course because that's the whole point of it and it's also the initial of the first letter of the company name the M for Mountain Dew. So I feel like that's uh, jam packed with good stuff um, but let me know what you think. So then just before I show you them final options I just want to remind you to press like on this video, 
press subscribe if you want to see videos like this every single week. And if you have an idea for a company that you'd like me to have a look at rebranding in the future, visit rebrandeverything.com and fill out the form on there and I'll add that to the list. I've also changed the format of the next bit based on a few comments below. Thanks for the feedback. I've put a little screen on the end with all five logos next to each other. Let me know if that's working for you and I hope it helps like when you're deciding to choose which to vote for. Oh, and I almost forgot to say, press the little button up there and remember to vote for your favourite. That's the whole point of the channel. Okay then, let's see them final options.